In this video, we're going to learn C-sharp basics in just 10 minutes. Variables, ifs, functions, classes, and more. All right, let's begin. Okay, so let's learn the basics on how to write C-sharp code. Now, the first thing you need is somewhere to write and compile your code. The easiest way is simply to use Visual Studio, which has a free version. Creating a simple console app is the easiest way to start playing around and writing some C-sharp. Okay, so when you do, you have the basic starting file with the main function, and you can press the start button up here to run your code, and as soon as you do, the code compiles, and yep, it runs, it opens a window, and it closes. Now, in this channel, I cover game development in Unity, which runs the code pretty much exactly the same, except it does it in a game engine rather than a console app. All right, so let's write some code. Something that you will use all the time is simply printing a message. So you can do that by accessing the console and running the write line function and then just write something. So just like this and hit compile and yep, it runs the code, it prints a message and it closes immediately. Now you can stop it from quitting instantly by adding a simple console.readKey. So run again and yep, there it is. Now the console doesn't close instantly so you can easily verify the output. Okay, now one of the core fundamentals of programming are variables, which are containers of data. So to define a variable, first you write the type, then the name, and then optionally, you can initialize it with a value. So this variable is of type int, it's named i and has the value 56. There's a multitude of types you can use for your variables. So you have ints for whole numbers, you have floats for floating point numbers, double is also a floating point number, but with more precision, bool for boolean logic so values like true and false char for a character and string for a string of characters or text so those are the basic types and you'll learn more as you go along you can do a simple string concatenation with plus so for example here print that message then plus the i and yep there's the output printing our variable contents another fundamental building block are functions so you define a function by first writing the return type now, if you want to return nothing, you can simply use void. Then you write the name of the function. And then you add parameters within the parentheses if there are any. So this function here returns nothing and takes no parameters. And this one takes an int parameter and returns a boolean. To use a function, you simply write the function name and then the parameters inside the parentheses if there are any. This is related to the fact that we are calling a non-static function from inside a static function. Statics are a bit more advanced, so don't worry about them for now, but in here you can simply fix it by making these two also static. So you can call a function like this, or our second function, and we pass in the parameters within our parentheses. Now if a function has a return value, you can also store it in a simple variable. All right, so that's the basics of functions. Now let's learn about ifs and conditions. So it's very simple, you just write the if keyword, then you write your condition, and then you open and close a code block. So a condition is anything that evaluates onto a boolean. So you can do comparisons like this, so i less than 10. You can do greater than, you can do equal to, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and not equal to. So the exclamation point here means not. You can also call functions, so down here we have a function that returns a boolean, so we can also call this. And again, we can use an exclamation point to invert the result. Then you can also combine conditions, so mainly you do that with an AND, which is two ampersands, or an OR using two pipes. So here this whole thing will be true if i is under 10 and i equals 5. Then you can also group conditions by using parentheses. So here we are testing if i is under 0 and i equals 5, or i bigger than 10 and i equals 15. So first this one evaluates, and this one evaluates, and then you evaluate the entire or. So you write your condition, and then you have the code block which runs if this is true. So in this case, 5 is under 10, so if we run, yep, there you go, we have true. Then after the code block, we can also add the else keyword, and another code block. So this is what we'll return if the condition is not true. So here, make this 15 set, so this will be false. And if there you go, we have our false. Another way of doing conditional logic is with a switch. So you do a switch on something, and then you have the various cases depending on the value inside here. 
So you write case, then the value on this case, then in here you write whatever code you want, and then you do a break to indicate the end of the case. You also have the special default, which is a code that will run if the value does not match any of the other cases. Then you have collections like arrays and lists. Those are data types that hold a collection of variables. So to define an array, you write the type of the array and then square brackets. So here we have an array of ints. And now by default, the array won't be set to null. So we need to initialize it. And to initialize an array, we do new of our array type. And in here, we need to give it a size, so let's say five. So we are initializing this array with five positions that can hold five ints. And all of those positions are set to zero, which is the default. You can also omit the size and initialize the array right in here. So just like that, we are initializing an int array containing all of these elements with these values. So this is our array, which is a fixed size collection. Now, if you need something with a dynamic size, you can use lists. So you write list and then the type inside the angle brackets. And again, by default, this will be null. So we need to create the object. So we do a new list. And again, if we want in here, we can also initialize some variable. Now, the main difference between a list and an array is that the array is fixed, but the list can expand and contract. So here we can do int list and add a value. Then we can also remove a value. All right, so these are your basic collections. Now let's learn about loops. The easiest way to cycle through a collection is with a simple for each. We do for each, then we write our iterator variable and then the collection that we want to cycle through. So this will cycle through the whole list and write it on the console. Yep, there it is, one, two, three. So this works on any collection, so it works on the list as well as the array. Then you also have a simple for. So the for is split into three distinct parts. Each of them is separated by a semicolon. Now the first part initializes a iterator variable. Then we have our end condition. So if this is false, then the cycle ends. And the last part is run after each cycle, so usually this just increments our iterator. So we can cycle through our list count, which is going to count down the total number of elements. So in here we can do a simple write line to print the index position, and then the element inside that list in that index position. Yep, there we go. On index 0 we have the element 1. And then you also have a while. So you do while, then the condition, and then the code block. So this code block will run whilst this condition is true. So in this case, it will run five times. Then you also have a do while. The do while is very similar, except it tests for the condition only at the end instead of at the beginning. Now you can write comments in a single line with two forward slashes, or you can do this to open or close comments. Now comments are useful for adding some text in your code. However, do keep in mind clean code principles. So ideally, your code should be fully and easily understood without any comments. If it's not, then go and rename your variables to make the code intent more clear. You can define your own types, and one of the more useful ones are enums. So you write the keyword enum, then the name. So this is an enumeration of certain specific values. So we have this variable of this type, meaning it can hold these possible values. For example, enums are extremely useful for doing a simple switch on a bunch of specific states. And C Sharp being an object-oriented language means that you can create your own classes. So you write the keyword and then the name. Then you can create an object of this type by first defining the type, then the name, and then you do a new and you instantiate your object. Now by default, you have a parameter unless constructor, but you can also write your own, just like that. And then inside your class, you can do anything you like, like defining fields and functions. So just like that. Then something very important, which are accessors and scope. Now for accessors, you have mainly public and private. Private means that this function is only accessible from inside this class. So if up here, I try to access that function. There you go, there's an error because that function is private. But if I swap it to public, now I can access that in here. And if you don't specify anything, like for example on this void main, then the default will be private. Now these accessors can be applied to functions, but also to all of these fields. So all of these fields are private, so I cannot go up here and modify them. There you go, an error. And now regarding variable scope, 
a variable defined inside a function only exists inside this function. So here we're defining an int variable named i, and then we are calling this function, and here we have an error because i does not exist whilst inside of this go. It's defined here, so the variable only exists from here to down here. So in order to use a variable over several functions, you can define it up here as a member variable. And just like this, now we can use this same i down here. All right, so that's the basics of C-sharp in just 10 minutes. These are the absolute basics, so if you want to learn more, then check the playlist linked in the description where I covered some more advanced topics in greater detail. Now, programming is all about experience, so go ahead and write some code. Like the video if you found it helpful, and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.